thanks so much for joining in to the Kelly Hill Ross show today. I am excited about the show we're going to have today. It's with Matt Alston, who is a consultant for the Howard County Center of African American Culture in Columbia, and it's a museum. And as you can see, I have these old museum pieces here um, because they actually preserve our past. They remind us of where we used to be so we can have something to compare to where we are today. Also, um, in this segment, we are going to be meeting with Mazette Meredith from EXP Realty, and we're going to look at the renovations from the Edgar Allan Poe home in Owens Mills, Maryland. So, I want you to get your cup of coffee, tea, or your favorite beverage, and relax and enjoy. group which we are a consulting firm so from that if you want to make that connection of how I got involved in the consulting aspect we were connected to also this museum because it's a nonprofit mm -hmm. and the founder I've known for years before she passed as well as now the president of the board that was a good friend of mine for many many years and we talked about how I could assist them in moving this museum to the next level. So I have some expertise in that area. Okay, so how exactly did this museum come to be and how long has it been around? Well, it was founded in 1987 by a person that was dear to me also. I knew her very well, that was Wileen Birch. And she had a vision really of bringing to Howard County the first African American museum. And so she would collect artifacts around and collect, uh, shall we say, not just artifacts but also museum pieces and wanted to have a center where that, those collections could come together. So this was really a vision of hers back in 1987 and it was really the first African American museum here in Howard County. Wow, okay. Well, I know that we've been talking on and off set about some of your um, your background, and you mentioned that you've worked in the past with the Reginald F. Lewis Museum. Mm -hmm. So coming from a museum that's on a larger scale mm -hmm. yes. to coming here to Howard County, how, how does that compare? Well, I was able to convince the board of directors and the chair of my expertise, having sit, as you mentioned, on one museum board, but I also sit on a, several other nonprofit boards. So it gave me a perspective of one, not just strategically sitting on a board, but also having the experience of sitting also on a, as you mentioned, a larger museum board here in Maryland. So by being on that board there, and then also being on several other boards where I was in a leadership position, Add that to my consultancy gave me, I think, a good perspective on how, what we could do here at the museum here in Howard County and really help to move it to the next level. So with that in mind, the board chair decided to bring me on board and really do an analysis of the museum from a consultant standpoint, where they are now, where they want to be, and what's the long-term objectives for this museum here in Howard County. So that was the initial phase, really, of the um, agreement that we had, yes. Okay, so what would you say are some of the future goals or some of the visions mm -hmm. that you have for this museum? Well, one of the, as you mentioned earlier, the vision, but also some of the challenges of a small museum here when you've got the larger elephant, if you will, mm -hmm. the original in Baltimore, but you also have the larger, bigger elephant down there in D.C. DC yeah. So really, we don't, we've got to carve out our niche, mm -hmm. and our niche right here is Howard County. But at the same time, 
part of those challenges is to let people know that we exist. And being the fact that it was started by Wileen and it was here in Howard County, but it was also centered primarily in Columbia. So, and fortunately, she had that vision, but the unfortunate side, maybe if you will, she wasn't a native of Howard County. So there were things that were somewhat missing from that Howard County because we're a very unique county. This was a county that's been here, but really Columbia put it on the map, as everyone knows if you're in the Maryland area. Mm -hmm. So once that was done, people outside of Columbia really didn't have an idea of what this museum was all about. So part of it as a challenge is exposure. Mm -hmm. Number two, like most fledgling, unfortunately, African American museums, funding getting that out there and getting the word and letting people know that this museum exists, here's what we're all about, and here's how we plan on growing. So we're in the same ballpark of other fledgling museums around here in the Maryland uh, area, and I don't mind mentioning them because part of our strategic plan is to reach out to those museums also. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got the Benjamin Banneker Museum in Baltimore County. You have the Slave Museum in uh, Montgomery County. On the Eastern Shore, everyone's getting a lot of press coverage now with the Harriet Tubman Museum. Mm -hmm. So you've got museums spread out here that were African-American centric or focused, but like most of them, they're very centered in their particular locations, mm -hmm. and we've got to get that word out so my vision to this museum and to others is to start a collaboration. Okay. Reaching out to not just the community here in Howard County, but connecting to the other museums that are here in Maryland and using somewhat of the original Lewis Museum as our Smithsonian in DC. Right. As that big one, but hey, reaching out to them and by being on that board, letting them know that we exist mm -hmm. so we can now start that long-term plan of collaboration and the critical thing that i see is this museum and others sustainability long-term sustainability when you have a museum that's founded by one person and that person unfortunately passes away that succession and that sustainability is brought into question and so what we're trying to do now is make sure that we can shore up that sustainability financially. When we talk, and you probably ask the question, it's always funding. Yeah. We need money, absolutely. But we also need that long-term strategic plan. Mm -hmm. So we can let people know, and I said it to the board, we've got to have this museum that my granddaughter, who is a six-year-old, that when she becomes 26 and 46, it's still here mm -hmm. and it's still viable. So that's the challenge that I see with not just this museum, but other museums that are in our category or in our particular uh, stage right now that was started, like I said, by people with great minds, great vision, great passion, great desire. But now transferring that now to a another group, that's where you get another board of directors who can capture that passion, capture the mission and vision that the museum has and say, okay, let me tweak it now and make it relevant for the 21st century. For those children, the grandchildren, the children or students that are in college, the students that are in high school, that this is a museum that's going to be a central repository for them, for them to continuously learn. So that's part of this overall, yeah. my overall vision for this museum and sharing that vision with the board so they can at least see that this is where we need to go. Oh, it sounds like you have your work cut out for well, you. It's, it's a challenge, true, but at the same time, it's a passion. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what I do, this is where Whatever we touch as a consulting firm, we have the idea, whatever we touch, we want to make it better. Right. So I want to leave a legacy here at this museum that when I got here, what we put together can sustain itself for the 10, 20, 30 years. 
so that we can leave a legacy going back to using my granddaughter as a model, so to speak, as a six-year-old, that 26 years from now, or 20 years from now, when she's 26, this museum is viable, relevant, and a cultural learning center, not just for people that maybe have a mild desire, but really want to learn a lot more. Okay. Well, with you, with us talking about legacy, I think that it's great that we always want to leave something for the future generation. So with that, can you tell us if someone wants to make a donation or if they want to contact you about visitation um, and coming to the museum, like how would they be able to find that? Well, we're glad that you asked that. We are moving now like everything, social media. Okay. We've got a Facebook page. So I invite people to go on our Facebook page, also go on our website. They can make donations via Facebook. Okay. They can make donations in person, online. So we're, that's part of that strategic plan is to get hit those spots out there really mm -hmm. using social media. Okay. And on social media, it is the Howard County Center of African American, African -American, American Culture. Culture. Yes. Okay. So we've got that on Facebook. We've got it, like I said, really at our um, website. Mm -hmm. And if I may mention too, we've got a very strong connection with Howard County Community College, their library there. We have a research center there. So it's not just a museum here. It's also we have a strong connection with the Howard County Community College Library and their research center. Okay, sounds great. Well, all this was wonderful information. Thank you so much for taking the time out to just discuss this with us because I've lived in Maryland my whole life and I had no clue that this museum was even here and I'm very glad that I was able to learn more about it. Well, we're so glad that you invited us and that we could share with you this museum here in Howard County. Thank you. Well, that's it for our interview today, so we'll see you next time. My name is Janae Jackson, here with the Kelly Hill Bra Show. Take care. to the Black Authors Corner. We've got an exciting book uh, that I've been reading and it's called True Wealth Starts in the Mind by Lisa M. Jones and several other contributors. Here's what they say. How you do anything is how you do everything. The principles shared in this book can be used in many areas of your life, spiritual, mental, physical, social, relational, and financial. Allow each chapter to impact and move your life from bad to good or good to great. Use the principles to move you from vision to reality, bringing you closer to the person you wish to become. Because why are we vision rich but execution poor? Why do we live our life uh, and work it hard, we praise them on Sunday and go home broke on Monday? Wow. Talk about it. Wow. I read the manual. The enemy can't get me now because I read the manual right. I know he created me in his image and he said I've given you the power to do what? We never get together for and have what the prosperity parties. Something is wrong with that. One of my uh, clients said he used to work at a Jewish country club, and at that country club, um, he said they got together for lunch every day and talk about buying land and owning businesses. Why don't we ever have discussions like that? Mindset. True wealth starts in the mind. That was perfect. It's not in the pocket, it's in the mind. How can we fix our mindset? Show me your friends, I'll show you your zip code. Mm -hmm. Show me your friends, I'll show you your bank account. Mm -hmm. Show me your friends, I'll show you your destination. I learned a long time ago, eagles like hanging with eagles and chickens like hanging with chickens. Girl. 
<laughs> Eagles want to soar, but chickens don't mind flocking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is one particular chapter in here by Mr. Collis Temple III, and it says, respect the process. So what does that mean? It's like when you're writing a research paper. You know, you have several steps that you have to take. Well, you know, even in your own life, if you want to accomplish something, you have to have several steps on how you're going to accomplish your goal. And it's the same thing. It's the process. Respect the process. Understand that you can't get from A to D or A to B unless you look at the process. How are you going to accomplish those things? How are you going to go about it? And sometimes we, you know, want to um, move our lives, make a shift, but we don't look at the process. And we need to respect it because everything that you do in life has a process to it. This book, True Wealth, starts in the mind. Whatever man puts his mind on, it will not be denied him. So remember, go to Amazon.com, get the book by Lisa M. Jones, True Wealth Starts in the Mind. Read it and then apply it to your life. So thanks so much for joining me in the Black Authors Corner. Hello everybody, welcome to our real estate segment. Uh, today we're going to be following up with Mr. Raphael Kazanoff and I'm super excited about this Edgar Allan Poe house that we're about to go visit. It's super beautiful, so come with me. Good to meet so you today. Good to see you. I'm looking forward to seeing this beautiful home. We saw it before it got renovated and now we get to see it when you're done. I am looking forward to showing you this home. Yes. Come on in. Edgar Allan Poe family home. They purchased it back in 1936. And when they purchased it, they pretty well had 75 acres here and then started subdividing it. There's still uh, one of the Poe family members still living in this home there. Um, and then different people have bought up over the years. So it went from 75 acres to now 13 acres. And this area has become one of the more exclusive areas of Baltimore. So it is um, probably the best way to put it is we believe that when we go to sell this house that people will want it just because of the area it's in and the history that's behind the house as well. Okay. I, I'm just blown. I am blown today. Well, wait till you see it. Oh and my God. God. So it's... tell me everything you've done about this house because you know I am a house guru and I love beautiful things. The mm -hmm. historic aspects of it. Mm -hmm. So like the staircase and many other moldings we've replicated throughout the house. Yes. This, um, and this we, is original, correct? That is original. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. Um, and then we finished it off so it would be livable in the 21st century mm -hmm. while keeping the integrity of the history of this home. But I noticed a lot of the main details, like you said, with the integrity, I noticed you still have some of the uh, metal glass yes. and the uh, wood casings. And actually uh, the, front and door, the front door and the vestibule is all original to the house. Um, and we just basically just redid it so it would be in good shape. Wow, that's amazing. Um, I'm going to follow you. Yes. And let so you take first, one. So I noticed this beautiful fireplace. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a showstopper. Yes. And we kept the fireplace and the ceiling height what they were originally. We basically put in all new windows throughout the house. Oh, wow. Replicated the windows with wood windows that represented mm -hmm. the time when this house was built. Now, was that a uh, historic uh, thing that you had to do? No. No, but okay. just a choice that we made in wanting to keep the integrity of this home and, and it 
and its history. Okay, um, awesome. I, I really appreciate that. Because so many uh, builders uh, and renovators, they tend to not do that. And that's really important. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, we put in a f um, many zones to make the house more livable with air conditioning and so on. So we took away the old heating system, but we made it also where you didn't see or deal with uh, all the, you know, the newness of it all. Mm -hmm. So when you come in, you don't know what year you're in, you know, when you walk in a room I, I, It's like very this. modern. Yes. It's very modern in here, because a lot of times you'll see radiator holes in the floor, yes. where the radiators used to be, and <laughs> I don't see any of that. But I do notice that um, you do have the uh, over the top, where back in the day, like you say, as far as the interior go, they still had these uh, risers. What do they call these? Transitions? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, transoms. Transoms. Yes, yes. yes. We used and to have them also, in my home. when they open, they create venting throughout the house. Mm -hmm. That was the original idea yes. behind it. Um, and then come so, out here and you What is this room we're going into now? This is uh, the sunroom. Uh, okay. This used to be um, a room where they basically had a big water fountain in here. Mm -hmm. um, so we kept the original stone, took out the water fountain, okay. and conditioned this space so people can enjoy it. It's um, got, and it brings in a lot of natural yes. light. I love the French doors uh, that you kept back because some people, they close them off. Right. But you did, and it's good because it flows a lot better right. uh, coming into this space. And I noticed that you have uh, sliding patio doors go out to the patio. And I understand that yes. uh, you're going to be finishing this really soon? Yes, yes. The outside patio won't be finished. Um, probably in the next week or so, the stone just arrived, and we're looking forward to doing it. Uh, it's going to be lined with brick that matches the home. And it should be a great spot for people to come and relax. That is really capturing my eye. This beautiful statue, statue. just peeking at me yes. over here. It's gorgeous. The statue was original to the house and we decided to keep it. Yes. Just like the one in the front. I love the one in the front. The first yes. thing I noticed when I drove up right. was that one. And it's was. a statement piece. Yes, it is. It really is. Yes, it is. Uh, these three fans, I noticed you put these in. Yes. And I love the way you you kind of space them instead of having that one big fan in the right, middle. Right. This is beautiful. Have it so the whole room gets the effect from it. Yeah. Love it. But this is a very well lit room, um, something that people can enjoy mm -hmm. and entertain and relax and, and, and have it integrate with the outdoors. And another item I noticed in this home is that you've painted the brick. Yes. But it's really soft. It yes. is, and it's beautiful. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And it brings in light, you know, yes. into the room, you know, by lightening, uh, by making the brick lighter. Um, previously, this brick got severely damaged, you know, from the um, mm -hmm. uh, water fountain that they had in here. Mm -hmm. And so when we painted the brick, we realized, my God, it makes this room really warm, and you know. Uh, and massive. It was yeah, huge. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> okay. I'm going to follow you. Okay. So. Okay. So coming in here, this was the original library. Oh. Um, and this is a memento to Edgar so Allan Poe. This is Edgar Allan Poe. Yes. I never met him. Yes. But I love his home. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is what you consider a study? Yes, this is a study. And it used to be like a trophy room that the Poe family had um, of all the animals they hunted around the world. Mm -hmm. um, so we turned it into an office and we also added on an elevator okay. um, to service all three floors. And the idea behind putting it in the elevator mm -hmm. was keeping in mind that whoever is buying this home, this may be their final home. Mm -hmm. And so they would have the ability to be able to go up and down the steps when they are no longer able to okay. and use the elevator instead. 
So. Well, I um, don't need no wheelchair or anything, but I appreciate that elevator, I can tell you that. <laughs> and it's also been great because there were a lot of things that we couldn't fit into the basement and uh -huh. it all went into the elevator. Does this go along with the basement? Yes, it does. Awesome. Wow. Wow. This is really, really nice. And these accordion doors goes to the other side? Yes, they do. So you can well, get it, out on either side? It depends on which floor you're on. Okay. In the basement, it opens on that side, and on the second floor, it opens on that side. Well, on this floor, it opens on this side. Okay. It more sense putting it into here. Okay. Okay. That sounds great. That's awesome. So, one here. of my favorite rooms. <laughs> this is one of my favorite rooms. My husband, he gets so mad with me because I do laundry every day. Okay. And I love this. This is not like my laundry room, I can tell you that. <laughs> So, so officially, <coughs> excuse me, officially this is a mud room and it comes off of the garage and when people walk in there's a couple of hood closets here okay. and uh, here is the area where they can, the kids or adults can hang coats, mm -hmm. um, do laundry and it's a great area also for storing um, and yeah, this is like a pantry for the kitchen um, yes. so um, this is a beautiful area, and, and I noticed the ceilings are very nice. Yeah, and the ceilings are shiplap, um, shiplap ceiling, and it just adds like a certain elegance to a room that, it, you know, versus plain ceilings, you know, yes. it, just, it just really adds a lot to it. So. It did. It made this, this very fun place to come in. So it's, tell me about It just time. adds so much to the, um, to the room. Uh, these are cement tiles, mm -hmm. um, very durable, extremely difficult to work with. Mm -hmm. um, once you put it down, you have to seal it. But once you seal it, this is pretty much a forever tile. Awesome. And it's meant to replicate, you know, history with mm -hmm. a modern touch to it. Yes. Okay. Whoops. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, so what type of wood floors are these? Uh, those are wood floors original to the house. They're um, white oak floors, mm -hmm. and in many places, we were fortunate we were able to find this wood uh, to be able to finish off some of the spaces this that needed to be footage. finished. Yes, and um, and then also having it match the original. So um, mm -hmm. with the darker stain, you can't tell the variations as much, you mm -hmm. know. But it looks it looks good. So we'll start here in the dining room. Okay. Wow. Incredible. Back when the Poe family had this home, they also spent a lot of time in the dining room. Um, and it could, um, this area here, even though this table is rather small, mm -hmm. um, you could actually make it even larger and, and like quite a few people. Right. Wow. Wow. Is that what I think that is over there? Those yes, yes. That's what, to the kitchen. that's what the servers use in order to be able to come off of the kitchen. Wow, and it's, it's look at those that. Ways. Yes. Man, you just have so many intimate details yes. in this home. And I know the new homeowner is going to be loving this house. Uh, I wish it was me. <laughs> <laughs> so I noticed that you, you have this beautiful color. What is the name of this color? Because it's so pretty. Um, you're talking about this right yes. here? Yes. I don't know the name, mm -hmm. um, but we do have it's uh, color yeah, a sample of it, but, but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I was very fortunate that I had a, an awesome designer, really? you know, come in and choose the colors. Um, and the job. ceiling here was done by a group of artists, mm -hmm. um, and it's a type of painting, I'm, I'm sorry, a type of uh, finish. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Venetian, um, it's a Venetian finish, mm -hmm. a Venetian glaze. And uh, it takes a long time to put on, mm -hmm. but when you look at it, it's so rich. It is know, very and, rich. Yeah, it just has many depth because yeah. they layer, you know, the actual painting. Awesome. Wow, Raphael, this house is massive. But this, the big tiles, uh, this will be considered like the breakfast room? This will be considered the breakfast room. And I noticed you have these little, um, what do they call it? High 
Yes, um, please. You're talking about the, the accent pieces and the tile? Yes, does this uh, mean accent, anything? Yeah. Um, yes, in fact, um, the Poe family had this room built in memory of Edgar Allan Poe. And if you notice, a Little lot of the book. pieces here are... As a king. Yeah, we have the crown. Reuben books. Yeah. Um, a crown here. Uh, you have, look like light. And so we chose to keep it intact um, mm -hmm. as a, really a memory of what this house, Music. what it meant to the prior mm -hmm. owners and to the legacy of Edgar Allan Poe as well. Now, was these beams always here? No, they were not. We added the beams and the ship and lap ceiling mm -hmm. in order to warm this room up and mm -hmm. bring the ceilings down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, it, this job. room has such beautiful tall ceilings mm -hmm. that a room can get lost mm -hmm. if it's just left to the ceilings. So by putting in these beams, it just really warmed it up and helped it um, work together. It did, it did. Yeah. It did a wonderful job. And I noticed you got French doors. Yes. Uh, if you want to get fresh air to come into the space. Yes. Uh, you can do that. Yep. And you have this fireplace. Was this always here? Or you no, we it? added this fireplace and it's a two-way fireplace. And we did it so people can enjoy it in the kitchen as well as in the breakfast room. Um, and when you come into the kitchen, you'll see the other side here. And I'm going to come on the other side here. Hey, hello, Raphael. <laughs> That's nice. really nice. That is so nice. This is an amazing kitchen. All I want to do is sit down and say, waiter, please. That's all I yes. want to say. <laughs> I'll well, have one of those. <laughs> this, this kitchen was done with the intent um, and looking at who would who would be here enjoying this kitchen and mm -hmm. how does the, this kitchen fit in with today's, I guess, way of entertaining and way mm -hmm. of relaxing. And so you can if have you know, a party. Yes, you can have, um, and I imagine that when people come, especially if it's a small group that they are entertaining, mm -hmm. having this it's interacting with whoever is cooking, um, it's just really a good way to entertain um, and enjoy dinner uh, before they actually, you know, relax to another part of the house. Yeah. Um, and we also made it so we had furniture in the kitchen. I, I love that. Right. So, that. you know, if you're here and you just want to read a book or do whatever hang or hang out, this is a great place to do it. Um, you got that right. Well, what type of material? Uh, this is a marble. A marble. Um, and this particular marble is, um, I forget the name, but it part of the reason why she chose this marble is because of the way it interacted with the backsplash mm -hmm. and the cabinetry and also everything here was done following the tile work out there so no colors in here were supposed to be off um, so this would be the centerpiece in essence even though it's in a separate room, mm -hmm. but it does it interact flows with over. the kitchen. Correct. Because I noticed how you brought the beams all the way in yes. to the kitchen, so it flows extremely well. And um, um, very well done. And the hood in the kitchen uh, was done uh, by a local forger who custom made it to the space. Really? Um, and it, we just think it's just a tremendous piece. Uh, be, Behind the, uh, the hood is a steel beam, and we didn't want it to be apparent, you mm -hmm. know, as far as how, why would the room be chopped off? So this kind of brings in the room together. Okay. Right. I know you have an eight burner stove. Yes, yes. <laughs> and this is for the serious chef. It's a serious um, chef's it's kitchen. A, it's a complete Viking kitchen. Yes. Um, and, um, you know, for people who enjoy cooking and entertaining, this is the perfect kitchen for them. Absolutely, absolutely. I know you had two sets of stairs here. Yes. This is the back staircase. This, this is, is a back the staircase. front staircase. So and the back staircase leads to the basement in the third level. Okay. Um, and then the main staircase leads to the second level. 
cross, because I know she had well, a bridge here. Why don't we go ahead and I'll show you the apartment. We're still okay. working on that space as far as the walk to the apartment. And another thing I noticed is that you have crown molding throughout the whole entire house. Yes. So this walkway here makes you feel like you're in nature. Um, you know, you're just surrounded by trees. Um, and we kept it this way, well, we built it this way, so it would feel like you're interacting with the outside before you go into another living mm. space. So if you have like a, your parents who are living here, or maybe guests coming to your home, mm -hmm. this area right here um, will, will be the space that they most likely will choose to do this. And it can also be a home office. exactly how it's designed to be, but by not putting in the kitchen, gave someone the flexibility of doing a home office. Right. That's amazing. This is just, just beautiful spaces um, everywhere you go. And so that's large space over a three-car garage, so it's not confining at all. Well, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that interview and learned a little bit about the preservation and the museum in Columbia with Mr. Alston. And I also hope you enjoyed seeing those renovations in that fabulous family home of the Edgar Allan Poe family. So, and those are things that you can do as well. That's all you need to do is contact Lizette Meredith at EXP Realty and she can hook you up. So, until the next time, stay safe, in peace.